Thursday, 11th of April, 2023, the Attorney General and Minister of Agro-Industry and Food Security provided detailed information and clarifications regarding the grant of the shooting and fishing lease to Eco Deer Park Association on the state land at Dayou Grand Bassin. He also explained the reasons for which the Ministry of Agro-Industry and Food Security had subsequently decided to cancel the lease of Eco Deer Park Association and to resume possession of the said state land. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honorable Minister also informed the House that the Independent Commission Against Corruption has already initiated an inquiry into an allegation of corruption and money laundering in respect of the lease of the state land at Dayut to RKS Deer Ranch Limited and Eco Deer Park Association. He emphasized that both the Ministry of Agro-Industry and Food Security and the Forestry Service are collaborating fully in the investigation by providing all the information sought by the ICAC. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am informed by the Commissioner of Police that the police has also initiated an inquiry which is ongoing following reports made in March 2023 regarding alleged illegal activities at the state land formerly leased to Eco Deer Park Association. Mr. Speaker, sir, in regard to part C of the question, I wish to point out that as a date, I am not in presence of any report from relevant authorities for an alleged case of bribery against the Attorney General and the Minister of Agro-Industry and Food Security. Mr. Speaker, sir, in this particular case, it is neither advisable nor desirable to set up a commission of inquiry as suggested by the Honorable Member for the reasons I shall explain. Section 12.2 of the Commissions of Inquiry Act provides as follows, and I quote, no evidence given before a commission shall give rise to any civil or criminal proceedings other than a prosecution for perjury against any person giving such evidence. And B, be admissible against any person in any civil or criminal proceedings except in the case of a witness charged with having given false evidence before the commissioner or commissioners conducting an inquiry under this act. End of quote. It is clear, Mr. Speaker, sir, that no evidence given before a commission of inquiry can give rise to any civil or criminal proceedings or be admissible against any person in any civil or criminal proceedings. Mr. Speaker, sir, furthermore, Section 12.3 of the Commissions of Inquiry Act provides as follows, and I quote, no person giving evidence before a commission shall refuse to answer any question on the ground that an answer would incriminate him and no incriminating answer shall be admissible against him in any prosecution, action, or suit, unquote. Mr. Speaker, sir, what is stipulated in Section 12.3 further confirms that any evidence produced by a person before a commission of inquiry 
shall not be admissible against any person in any prosecution, action, or suit. Therefore, in the event the Commission of Inquiry incriminates any person, the evidence provided before the Commission cannot be used for the purpose of prosecution. It is worth mentioning that the Supreme Court made the following pronouncement in the case of Dayal versus His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Mauritius, Supreme Court Judgment Number 23 of 1998, and I quote, the proceedings before the Commission cannot be equated with a criminal or civil trial since the Commission has no power to try anyone for a criminal offence or to determine, as in the case of a civil court or tribunal having similar jurisdictional powers, the existence or extent of any civil right or obligation. The Commission is, it must be stressed, just a fact-finding tribunal which makes a report to the first respondent and its findings do not have any judicial, judicial effect, end of quote. Accordingly, the police or any other investigatory body cannot rely on the evidence brought before a commission of inquiry to institute criminal proceedings against any person blamed by the Commission. The police would instead have to start investigation afresh, call witnesses, gather evidence in relation thereto, and submit the file to the Director of Public Prosecutions for advice. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, experience has shown that previous commissions of inquiry set up by government have not enabled the authorities to take speedy actions against those blamed or incriminated in the report of a commission of inquiry. A commission of inquiry is time consuming and we have to bear in mind that the findings of a commission of inquiry are amenable to judicial review and eventually to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. Mr. Speaker, sir, in the present case of the allocation of state land to Eco Deer Park Association, as I stated earlier, the Independent Commission Against Corruption and the police are already investigating into the various allegations made in this matter. These institutions are the relevant and competent institutions to carry out such investigations and they are better equipped for such tasks. Moreover, since the hearings of a commission of inquiry are generally held in public, any evidence that will be produced before that commission or any witness deponing before that commission may be tempered or interfered with before any subsequent investigation by any investigatory body. Mr. Speaker, sir, the government is all for the setting up of any commission of inquiry which is fully justified and does full justice to the letter and spirit of the Commissions of Inquiry Act. We unhesitatingly did so by setting up, as a glaring example, the Commission of Inquiry on Drug Trafficking. However, in this particular case, for the reasons I have just explained, it is considered that the setting up of a Commission of Inquiry is indeed not warranted. La réponse, Monsieur le Président, du Premier ministre est semblable à la réponse donnée quand l'ex-ministre 
Yogida Sominoden était impliqué. Le Premier ministre avait dit qu'il n'a pas de rapport pour déterminer que son ministre a fauté. Étant donné, Monsieur le Premier ministre, que vous-même vous avez déclaré que vous êtes la personne la plus, le mieux informée du pays et que plusieurs personnes, selon vos mots, étant dans votre radar, est-ce que le Premier ministre peut dire à la Chambre depuis quand il est au courant de ce méga scandale qui éclabousse son gouvernement de Eco Deer Park impliquant son ministre et son PPS Depuis quand est-il au courant de cela well, what, is, what is the allegation against the Honorable Attorney General This is, this is, this is, the, question, this is the question that has been put. I think the Honorable Member should read his own question that he has put. Uh, he is now talking about other people. But if I look at the question at, par at uh, paragraph C, you are, you are talking about bribery against the current Honorable Attorney General. So I'm asking, what is the evidence? What is the information that you have, supposedly, to make such an allegation? Let me know. Premier ministre, ici dans la Chambre, vous venez de dédouaner votre attorney general et votre ministre de l'Agriculture. Ceci dit, ceci dit, le Premier ministre parle des allégations sans fondement, alors que nous avons eu des allégations sans fondement concernant l'honorable Colin Davelou, nous avons eu des allégations... Non, mais le Premier ministre parle des allégations. Le Premier ministre déclare fièrement bien souvent, Monsieur le Président, que Mopou casse les reins, la mafia, la drogue. Cela est lié à ma question initiale. Maintenant, Monsieur le Premier ministre, que votre propre ministre de l'Attorney General et votre propre PPS sont visés dans des, dans des, des allégations d'être en relation étroite avec un baron de la drogue qui a été condamné et qui a signé le contrat du BL. Qu'attendez-vous We are governed in this house, our proceedings are governed by our standing orders. And I will cite two standing orders to you. And I think you are duty bound to rule that such type of question asked by the honorable member are inadmissible. Sec uh, clause 22, one, I read, read as follows. A question shall not be asked which makes or implies, which makes or implies a charge of a personal character or which reflects upon the character or conduct of a person except in their official or public capacity. 45, close, uh, standing order 45, the conduct of members of the assembly <laughs> shall not be raised except upon a substantive motion moved for that purpose. And in any amendment, question to a minister or remarks in a debate dealing with any other subject, reference to the conduct of the persons aforesaid shall be out of order. Put good questions. Heureusement pour le gouvernement, ce n'est pas des good questions. Je voudrais savoir, monsieur le, le ministre a voulu me baïonner, et qu'attend le premier ministre pour montrer sa détermination et envoyer un signal fort alors que son, son attorney général, monsieur le président, est toujours en poste. Il peut, il peut, je le dis très fortement, il peut à ce jour manipuler les preuves et influencer les témoins. No. D'autres ministres à sa place ont dû... This is insinuation, gross insinuation. This is not proper to parliamentary democracy. We've been hearing a lot about parliamentary democracy. This is not proper. Dans ce cas, nous voyons le côté moral de ma question, Monsieur le Président. Le Premier ministre jusqu'ici a été sauvé par l'honorable le, le, Ganou et le speaker, mais le Premier ministre n'a pas répondu jusqu'ici. Est-ce que le Premier ministre considère-t-il approprié, normal, que son gouvernement, inclus lui-même, doive demander de l'avis juridique à son attorney général sur lequel 
pèse des graves allégations de corruption, de bribe, et qui est également son ministre de l'Agriculture responsable de l'attribution des terrains à Ecodir Park. Est-ce normal, Monsieur le Premier ministre Au moins, il peut répondre à ça. Monsieur, monsieur, monsieur le Président, premièrement, je n'ai pas dédouané la tournée générale. Il, est, il, est, il ne passe même pas devant la douane. Qu'est-ce que j'ai à dédouaner hein? But let me, let me say to the, repeat again to the honorable member, he should tell me what are the allegations he is alluding to. Il est en train de faire une, une déclaration générale. I have answered that as at now, I have no report from any relevant institution mentioning any allegation against the Attorney General. Therefore, the question does not arise. But let me, maybe he has a short memory, short-lived memory, not to, not to qualify what kind of memory he has. <laughs> you know, to a, to a reply, let me refer him to a reply that was made by Dr. Navin Chandra Ramgulam. Uh, to a PNQ that was put on the 11th of April 2006 in regard to the allegation of fraud and corruption against the Honorable Minister of Housing and Lands concerning the Bel Air Sugar Estate IRS project. I will just quote one answer. The Prime Minister then said, again, and I quote, again I say, don't believe anything you read in the press. <laughs> Never at any point. It is the same situation. What the Honorable Member is referring to, I also have been reading in the press all sorts of allegations, wild allegations. And I must say, most of them, if not all of them, unfounded as of today. Let me say as of today. Now, I cannot, I, we, let's see how this investigation is going to unfold. But as of today, I have, I have asked the Honorable Member, you come, you make an accusation to this House, tell us what evidence you have. Tell us, tell this House, if, 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 if you are honest and if you are sincere in your allegation, Tell this House who has made what allegation against the Attorney General for, for, for bribery. Le Premier ministre de ce pays n'est pas Patrick Asiavaden. Le Premier ministre de ce pays, le Premier ministre de ce pays est l'honorable Bravin Jagnat. C'est à vous de répondre. C'est à vous de répondre. Monsieur le Premier ministre, vous parlez d'allégations. Nous entendons tous les jours, nous entendons tous les jours dans les journaux, pas plus tard que hier. Order. Don't talk about all sorts of allegations. The press is free. You are in Parliament. If you are referring to a particular allegation, the Honorable Prime Minister told you, come with evidence. Don't impute motives. Don't create allegations, come with evidence. If you don't have evidence, change question. Le, le Premier ministre, c'est clair, le Premier ministre parle à moi d'amener des, des, des évidences. Non, c'est au Premier ministre d'éclairer la population sur les allégations de son propre ministre de attorney General. That question of population, enlightening the population. The population needs to be enlightened. Please. The population needs to be enlightened both ways, with your question and also with the answer. So there is no, that you're putting allegations. You have no evidence. So I consider order, order, no, no, I'm dealing, I'm dealing, this is another issue. I'm, wait, wait, 
I'm dealing with the move of the question. Your turn will come. Don't you worry. Be patient. Be patient. I'd like to ask Honorable Prime Minister. Point of order. Can I hear you again, please? Mr. Speaker, sir, can I refer you this time to Section 22.1H of our standing orders, where it is clearly stated every question, including supplementary questions, shall conform to the following rules. A question shall not include the names of persons or statement of facts unless they are necessary to make the question intelligible. And in the case of statement of facts, can be authenticated by the member concerned, nor shall it contain charges which the member asking the question is not prepared to substantiate, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Order. I think the standing order is clear enough. I, I don't even have to make a ruling. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my question to the Honourable Prime Minister concerns the uh, inquiries ongoing. He says he has no reports of any alleged act of corruption. This is because I presume <coughs> he's saying he has no access to ICAC, what's happening at ICAC. I'd like him to clarify that. So he's not getting any reports from ICAC, so he cannot say whether uh, whatever this, the other persons have actually involved the Honorable Minister of Agri-Industry. Agri the second one is the police. Now, the police and illegal activities. In September 2020, during COVID restrictions, there was supposed to be, we hear, a stag party, which would be illegal under the circumstances. Well, well, this uh, is honorable leader of the position. Well, what is the Bear question? Bear with me. Bear with yeah? me. This is a supplementary question. I allowed you. Put your supplementary question. The population is waiting for your yes, question. Yes, and looking at you too. It seems that Believe you me. have questions. You're making a long statement. Be that patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. So the question is here. What report did you get as to the stag party, which the police are inquiring? Not the ICAC, the police will report to you. What are you saying also that there was no party? In September there? Mr. Speaker, sir, the, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, I understand he has not put this question, but he should read the question. We are talking about setting up a commission of inquiry to inquire right, into uh, certain allegations that have been made in this question by the Honourable Member. And I have answered the, the, the issue. The issue is about setting up a commission of inquiry. And I have amply stated, giving the reasons why it would not serve the purpose, in this case, to set up a commission of inquiry. Let the investigatory bodies do their work. There is the ICAC and the police. And at the end, we will, we will find out, well, hopefully we will see, what is, what is going to be the conclusion. Honourable Any. members, I rule this question has sufficiently been canvassed. I move to the other question, Mr. Leopold. I am sorry. I had to announce that PQ B 211 will be replied by Honorable Minister of Land Transport and Light Rail, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Regional Integration, International Trade. PQ B226 will be replied by the Honorable Prime Minister, time permitting. Honorable Lepold. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, uh, B212. Mr. Speaker, sir, with regard to parts A and B of the question, I am informed by the Commissioner of Police that on Sunday, 5th of March 2023, at around 9.20 hours, following information received, the Police Operations Room, Paul Mathurin, requested a police sergeant to proceed to the residence of Police Constable J.F.C. 
30 years old at Muru. On arrival, the police sergeant found the body of police constable JFC lying in a prone position in a room of his concrete house under construction with a piece of electrical wire tied to his neck. Following an autopsy carried out, the cause of death was attributed to asphyxia due to hanging. Mr. Speaker, sir, an inquiry has so far revealed that on Saturday, 4th of March, 2023, police constable JFC, who was on third shift duty, was detailed to perform sentry at MBC police post at Citronelle and was armed with a police revolver. He had reported for duty around 23.15 hours and had allegedly left his post at around 23.40 hours for refreshment. However, he did not return to his site of work and as I stated earlier, on the next day, he was found dead in his house under construction. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am further informed that an inquiry has also been initiated by police on the loss of the revolver of late police constable JFC. During the course of the inquiry, several persons, including Mr. C.A., whom he met during the early hours of Sunday, 5th March, 2023, have been interviewed and searches have been carried out. Mr. C.A. was arrested on Thursday, 9th of March, 2023, and a provisional charge of larceny of government property has been lodged against him. Bail was denied to the suspect on Thursday, 16th of March, 2023, and he was remanded to police, to, to police cell. On Thursday, 30th of March, 2023, the suspect appeared before court and his remand has been extended up to Wednesday, 19th of April, 2023. Mr. Speaker, sir, police inquiry on both cases is proceeding. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, uh, can the Honourable Prime Minister, if you have information, to inform the House whether there has been any refresher course for police officers of Rodrigue for handling of a weapon after uh, their training? Well, I, from what I know, they have, uh, first of all, been uh, trained with regard to uh, the use and uh, the good and safekeeping of revolver uh, during their initial training time. And uh, there are uh, also uh, regular uh, courses uh, with regard to uh, the, the way uh, and the manner, and there is a protocol also, a very strict protocol with regard to how they uh, should be in possession of their revolver during uh, working hours and whenever they have to, uh, to, to go uh, to attend to, uh, let's say, other needs. Uh, I don't want to go into this, the detail of this case, but to other needs. What is, what is exactly also the protocol with regard to uh, the uh, possession of the revolver? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So can the, the Honorable Prime Minister state whether the police force has devised or implemented uh, any stress management program for police officers? Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I should have the information. Uh, 
Well, there are the recruits, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, are provided uh, training on uh, stress management during their initial training by police uh, psychologists to deal effectively with traumatic and emotional situations. And there are uh, simulation exercises that are often carried out with a view to allow them to develop the necessary skills for surmounting stressful and difficult uh, situations. Time over. Question B219, B220 have been withdrawn. Honorable Dleb. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. B221. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm informed that the waiting list of cataract surgeries as at first March 2023 was as follows. 